excited to be talking tonight in a short video about our new supercharger belt tensioner. You know, and supercharger belt tensioners are the unsung heroes of blown Gen 3 Hemis. Of blown any engines, but Gen 3 Hemis, of course, is all we care about. But, you know, why are they unsung heroes? Because if you think about a screw supercharger, like a typical Whipple 3 liter or 3.8 liter, if you're pushing 15, 1600 horsepower at that engine, and we can calculate that using in-cylinder pressure testing and calculating how much actual horsepower is driving the blower. It's upwards of three, 400 horsepower going through that belt, driving that blower. And what happens when you put three or 400 horsepower through a supercharger belt? It stretches. They're designed to stretch. It stretches quite a bit. I can't tell you how many videos I've shown where I've run the engine on the dyno, often testing tensioners and working on this tensioner design and showing how much belt stretch there is. And it's always something that people find remarkable that the belt stretches that much. What you need to know is the more power you make, the more boost you make, the more the belt stretches. And that's the problem with the stock tensioners. So I'm gonna first unbox what you get if you buy one of our tensioners for $549. And then I'm gonna show you how it compares in a couple of ways to the stock tensioners. And then I'll lastly take you through a little bit of deep dive into the guts of our tensioner and why we think we spent a whole lot of time figuring this out. This is one of the best tensioners that we've ever seen or ever tested. And we've tested a lot and used a lot. So what you'll get for $549 is this box in the mail. And in that box, you can either get the tensioner with a 10 or a 12 rib pulley. Almost everybody wants 10 rib, I'm finding out, because 12 ribs pretty much a drag pack only, guys, which are very few. And this is the tensioner itself. It will come with a pulley attached, torqued in place, ready to put on the tensioner bracket on the car. And it comes with its own bolt to attach, and we want you to use that bolt because that bolt has a, a flex, or sorry, it's a hex flanged bolt, and that flange has a couple purposes, which I'll talk about later when it tightens up on there. It looks like a pretty simple device, and in many ways it is a very simple device, but it incorporates a lot of features we'll come back to. But what is one of its primary features? Look at the range of travel. This will travel from here all the way to here. When the belt stretches, more, far more importantly, as we found out through all our testing, and in our testing, we actually measure blower speed directly with high-speed pickups, as well as measure engine speed, so we can see the precise amount of belt slip and optimize the system to lower belt slip. Why does belt slip matter? For every 1% of belt slip, you probably lose 10 or 20 horsepower. And you're gonna have some amount of belt slip, what you want is a tensioner that prevents the belt from damaging itself under that 400 horsepower load, allows it to stretch and keeps the belt and the system intact and gives you the minimum amount of, of slippage. So this range of motion is one of the big things that helps you. If you use a stock tensioner, it has a much narrower range of motion. And as you go up in power levels and the belt stretches more, you need more range of motion. You can see our tensioner has 120 degrees range of motion. Okay, now let's compare it to what a stock tensioner looks like. The original Hellcat stock tensioner was in many ways a pretty good tensioner. It worked pretty well even in high performance applications. But you can see that its range of motion, you compare from here to here on this one, and you can see this range is from here to here, which was, you know, probably roughly about half the range of motion in angular displacement as our unit. Now, that would work in many applications if you were to preload it all the way to one side when you put the tensioner together. You preload it all the way to one side, almost where it was up against the other stop. And then when the belt stretched, it would not run out of travel. What you don't want to happen is the belt stretches, it runs out of travel on the tensioner and the belt starts to get a little bit loose. At first, it just creates slippage at the top end of the range of power that you might not notice. But when it gets worse, it destroys the belts and throws the belts off and causes all kinds of problems. So these tensioners we got by with for quite a while. They were robust enough that they worked and I didn't seek my own tensioner result, my own tensioner uh, solution because these actually work pretty well if you preloaded them. Now, one of the dangers of putting tons of preload in and putting tons of tension in the belt, people think that actually helps. In many ways, it's detrimental. And it's detrimental to slip and it's detrimental to the performance of the system and whether the belt stays healthy. The other big factor is if you preload it all the way to one stop, and you go on the two-step or a rev limiter, it bounces off that stop. It bounces off that stop, it creates a lot of load in the tensioner. And when that load starts banging on those stops, on this relatively 
low cost cast tensioner body, it starts to bang on those stops until it breaks apart off. This is a pretty common occurrence on drag packs that have torqued these all the way or any high horsepower Hellcat or anything with a Whipple or even the stock superchargers where they're really pushing the limits and they torque it all the way over to one side. And as it bangs off that stop, it starts to break this on the two-step or on the rev limiter. On the other end, it runs out of travel and the belt becomes loose and starts to slip and then ultimately will fail the belt. So this had its limitations, but you could probably make it work for a lot of applications up to relatively high power. The really big change in the world is this is no longer available from the factory. You can't buy this tensioner. This is no longer available from the factory. I'll show you in a second what you can get now. You order a tensioner for your Hellcat or any replacement tensioner that where you've used this type of tensioner, what you're gonna get from the factory now is this. And you can see it's a much smaller tensioner. So it's, it's lighter and smaller in many ways, but it's simply a rubber bushing with some stuff inside. But you can see it's in many ways from strength wise, and the way it's produced, it's it's a very inferior product. And the big, big, big thing for us high performance guys who wanna use these tensioners and really push them, you can see the range of motion, how it's been reduced from this stock, original stock part to this now much lesser, not as strong, and not nearly as capable tensioner that's on the market today from Dodge. This works great on Hellcats and TRXs, and you know, Hellcat Durangos, any, any stock application. It's when you start to push it and you start to stretch the belt further that you desperately need that longer range of travel. You also need higher strength than what this offers. And you can compare very easily the strength of, of the arm of our tensioner. You know, you've got this little cast section here that can easily break. In fact, they actually create a fusible link where it can break. This one that can break pretty easily across here. This one's not going to break. This is billet, all billet and very, very strong. In addition, internally, I'm gonna now take a couple minutes and show you internally what's in this that makes it far superior in other ways. So let's go through a few of the features. When you look at this thing, like it's a big black chunk of metal that moves back and forth and keeps the belt tight. It's not that complicated. And in many ways it's not. We wanted to make it as simple as possible, but we've incorporated several features I really want you to see, because I want you to know, you're not only getting your money's worth for $549, you're getting a screaming deal, especially when you compare it to this for about $300. So first off, you get a pulley, okay, of your choice, 10 or 12 rib pulley. A 10 rib pulley bolts up and aligns perfectly on Hellcats and on Whipples that use that belt alignment and a 10 rib drive. Our pulley isn't just any pulley. In fact, <clears throat> it's a pulley made in Texas by our friends at R2 Engineering and it's an aluminum pulley. What you'll see on a lot of the aftermarket tensioners is they use a steel pulley because the factory tensioners initially had steel pulleys. They now have plastic pulleys. But they, many people chose to use a steel pulley. What you learn in racing or anything where you're trying to speed something up is weight is your enemy. Weight is your enemy. Weight that rotates is even a bigger enemy. So this big pulley out here made out of steel versus being made out of aluminum, May not seem like a big deal, but it has a hard time keeping up and spinning up and slowing down because in fact, its mass causes problems. So this pulley is made out of aluminum by our buddies in R2 Engineering in, 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 uh, in Texas. Now, in addition to it being made out of aluminum, it contains two pressed in SKF made in Italy bearings. Now, these bearings are a type of bearing that sometimes you'll find one bearing in the pulley, as you find here or even a lesser a lesser bearing. These are two very, very good bearings, SKF, made in Italy bearings. You can find bearings like this made in China, and like everything else from China, you won't find it in our products. We wouldn't take them if they gave them to us. Okay, so, and of course, Mr. Trump's making it a little harder for us to get stuff from China, thankfully. But in the end, <clears throat> these are sourced SKF, great bearing supplier, and these are made in Italy, and there's two bearings in there, not one, okay? So that's extra bearing support for the extra loads that this tensioner sees in actual operation. In addition to that, we give you a 10.9 metric bolt, which is equivalent to like a grade eight bolt for English, and we give you this special washer. This washer goes through here and supports those two bearings nicely, as well as the bearing being supported on this landing location. So when you tighten that bearing down, you tighten this down with this support in there, 
that actually provides a great axle for those bearings are on. Very strong, keeps those bearings centered, keeps everything square and working well at very high RPMs. Because you gotta remember, this is spinning at the same RPM that your typically your blower pulley is spinning. So 20,000 RPM. So in addition to that, <coughs> the, the nice Worsher retaining essentially grade eight, now grade 10.9 for metric, a double bearing aluminum 10 rib or 12 rib pulley. If you start to look at the body itself, We've added several features to the body itself. You'll note that this thread, which is where the pulley bolt goes, has got a helicoil in it. Because we know, even though we've encouraged you not to use that bolt to torque the tensioner over into position to put the belt on, you know, in the throw of the battle, you're gonna grab a hold of that bolt and you're gonna spin it. And if you over torque that bolt and rip the aluminum threads out of this aluminum housing, you've just ruined this very expensive bill of part you bought. So we put a helicoil in there not so you can do that, so that if you ever make that mistake, it won't be quite as detrimental to your, your new brand new tensioner. What we've also done is given you a point where you can put a socket and, and a, a 15 millimeter or 17 millimeter hex socket, and you can torque it over using this location instead of trying to use the bolt, which you really shouldn't do. So this is a nice location. And the way it's positioned in the car often is down here where you can get a, a nice uh, extension and a socket on it and torque it over to install your belt. If you have to use this, you'll get away with it. And you'll get away with it in part because one of the secrets of this tensioner is more spring force, more tension in the belt isn't good. Up to a certain point, it's good. Beyond that point, it's bad. What really, really is detrimental to how these belt systems work is alignment and all this staying structurally sound and this big range that we have. So what's inside there? <coughs> because it, it takes more than, you know, just a stiffer spring. This has the right spring, but like any car, you need, if you put the right spring on and take the shocks off, that's a problem. Some of the tensioners are out there. They've essentially not done as good a job with the damping. In other words, taking the shocks off, put a bigger spring in, taking the shocks off, and the thing will go out of control. So we've been very careful about putting in damping into the system. Now, how does that done? This retaining nut, underneath that nut, you'll find a Bellevue washer, which creates a spring force. It's a washer that is a little bit bent, as you can see, and when you press down on it, it creates spring force. And a little nylon, it's actually not nylon, it's another material, but it's for, for layman's purposes, it's nylon, and a little nylon disc. And when you put these together and you tighten this down, it seats on this shelf right here and creates the right amount of force to create the damping in the system. And that damping in the system is critical. And we've tuned that. So this has all been you know, worked on several times through several iterations and including the spring force. And the spring itself is a clock spring like this. Now, there's a couple of cool things about the spring, but the actual center bearing is a simple, and this is a special type of graphite impregnated plastic bearing that works very well. You know, you gotta remember this doesn't travel very far or very fast when it's moving, and it, that works very well and allows us to have tons of strength in this center portion. You see how thick this metal is? This starts here and goes all the way out to here, all right? In addition, you'll notice that the axle that it runs on is made as part of this body. It's not a pressed in part. Some of the aftermarket parts have a body and a body made out of billet and they press a steel shaft in here with a flange or with a, with a spline flange on it and that tends to move back and forth, back and forth with use and then cause problems. This is made as part of this part. You can see how thick the wall of it is, all made out of billet. This spring has been highly engineered and worked on for quite a while to get it to be the right amount of force with the right amount of wrap to give us this, this spread of travel as well as the right amount of force. It'll feel like, in some cases, like you don't have enough force, but actually you gotta remember, it doesn't take a lot of tension. It takes motion and keeping up with the belt as it moves and stretches. The spring itself is made in California. We just got this batch of springs and we're installing and putting them together. We had a spring that we got out of China to use as a test. It cost one twenty second of what this spring cost. But we don't buy things from China and we don't use those materials that have been unfairly supported by their government. So we bought this spring for 22 bucks out of California. It works perfectly. We worked with a great company there that worked back and forth. These bodies are manufactured and machined right here in Kentucky out of U.S. parent material billet aluminum. All of these parts are sourced in the U.S. are where we can get them, but not in places where you get very low cost 
questionable components. So this is a, a fantastic value for $549 with the pulley, the aluminum pulley of your, of your choosing, 10 or 12 rib, with all these features and makes it far superior to what used to be a pretty good a pretty good thing with a pretty decent amount of range, but incredibly superior to what's available today and at a cost that isn't that much greater. So we'd, uh, we'd be happy to ship these all day long because we know how hard we've worked on them and we know how important the supercharger belt tensioner and the supercharger's belt, how difficult its life is driving these big horsepower Gen 3 Hemis with big blowers on top, whether they're IHI blowers or Whipple blowers or Magnuson blowers. You know, the tensioner and the function of the tensioner in the system is critically important. So we're very pleased to be able to finally get these to market. We've been testing them for over a year. Plenty of videos out there that will show you how they work on the two-step, up on the rev limiter. They've now been on cars, Hellcat, uh, <coughs> Hellcat that ran in the 830s, down at Legion of Demons, uh, Jerome Hellcat, Richard Higgs, and Leroy Ranger, who of course makes the pulleys. He was down there testing the car. They've made now 12, 15 hard passes on the car, had zero problems with the tensioner. So we're very comfortable that this latest iteration and what we're putting in production and beginning to ship today, tonight, because I'm gonna stay out here after this video and keep making these. Uh, and, and you know, we're very comfortable that these are gonna be a great product for us and for you to help your Gen 3 Hemi Power dreams come true.